Hey, everybody, welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Book two of Mistborn, The Well of Ascendancy, has got to be the worst book that I've probably read this year. I'm going to talk about it in about a three minute non spoiler section and then jump into the spoiler section. You'll see a warning right below me. It's not surprising that I didn't like book two. It's just surprising that I thought it was so bad that it's probably the worst book I've read this year. And I've read a lot of books this year after I discovered audiobooks. My opinion on book one used to be that it was really good, but I think that was just because of how much popularity that Sanderson was getting. So I just assumed it was good, even though I didn't like it. I, I, I distinctly remember not liking it, but I just said that I liked it because I, I just wanted people to like me. And I was about to go down the same route for book two when I realized this book is actually hot garbage. There's so much about it that doesn't work. And one of the main things is that since it's the middle book in a trilogy, it really has such deep middle book syndrome without any of the upsides that many normal good authors would have. I think that Sanderson has a lot of downsides, and one of them is probably his writing. And usually the writing is what carries a middle book. Even if the plot is kind of bad, even if the characters are kind of bad, at least the writing is kind of good. In a middle book, usually the plot is the worst part. The characters are usually good, and the writing, it just carries it all together. So the problem with this middle book is that Sanderson's writing is kind of trash. And so the middle book is such a middle book syndrome. It, there's just really nothing holding this book together. And I know that a lot of people really like this book, which is kind of surprising because I can't imagine why. This book really has very little outside of lore at the end of the book and a really cheesy, awful, overdone romance novel that is kind of trash and kind of like worse than side plots in other books. This entire romance novel is basically the plot of the book and it just doesn't, it's just no good. It's not good at all. So if you look at it from the lens of a romance novel, if you judge it based on other trashy romance novels, maybe this comes out a little bit higher. But if you're judging it based on fantasy, which you have to because nobody that loves romance is suddenly jumping into the second book of Mistborn. If you judge it based on fantasy, it gets much, much worse. A lot of lore is there. A lot of people are going to enjoy that lore, but there's so little meaningful story events that are occurring that this doesn't feel like a fantasy story. This feels like a side plot in a book that is in a series that already, in my opinion, feels like a side plot. I'm already super, generally speaking, anti-Sanderson. I, I don't like Sanderson's writing. I think that his writing is just really lazy, really cheesy, and the least that he has is plot. Like, at least he has a good plot. And that's typically what I rely on in general Stormlight Archive, Mistborn, Elantris, Warbreaker. That's what I've relied on. That's what I've hooked onto. And it's so weird to see a book that has so little plot when everything else about him already sucks. Like, his writing sucks. His characters are really bad in this. Like, Mistborn, I've read a bunch of his books. And I've, I think I've read every single series that he has, at least some of the books. And Mistborn has to have the worst characters. Vin is a really awful character in book one. And in fact, if you ask me, it gets worse here. And so if you take all of these things together, you say the writing's still bad, the plot is awful, the characters, especially in this series, are really bad. The only good thing about this is the lore. You put this all together. If you ask me, if you didn't like the first book, you're gonna like the second book even less. And that's my non-spoiler review completed. Now onto the spoiler talk. So I'm gonna take a little bit longer with the spoiler section because I wanna make sure to include all these clips of reaction stuff that I've done while reading this book. Now the book opened up obviously on the fallout of Mistborn 1 and I thought that Mistborn 1 was a really boring book. I, I thought it was really garbage um, and the only thing that was interesting about it was the end and Kelsier who's now gone. So you took the only interesting character within the book and you threw him out. And so this entire book feels like it's missing a main character because Vin is a trash character at this point and Elend is a trash character also. And so what you have is them rebuilding something that just cannot be rebuilt. You cannot rebuild Mistborn without Kelsier. And that's a real big issue because Kelsier was the draw to the original story. Nobody cares about Vin realistically. And I think that the people who care about Vin care too much about general fantasy. I think you could toss a trash book at them and they'd be like, oh my God, this is a great character, even though it's like a very standard character. That's the sort of thing I feel about Mistborn. There's so many random trashy characters, like half the side characters who have names. I can't even remember one thing about them because they're so useless. They're, they're so useless. And Sanderson tries so hard, obviously, to make them have these characters and these personalities. But at the end of the day, they're just so lame and so forgettable and they don't do anything. And they each do like one or two things and then you just forget about them and it just doesn't work. The characterization of Vin in particular is kind of disgusting. It, it's so lazy. It's so overused. Every single troop, every single trope that's used is like the most standard Sanderson thing. Oh, I used to be able to protect everyone. Now I'm not. Could you get any more obvious? I remember I read somewhere that if Sanderson said, if you want subtle, if you want subtle writing, then you shouldn't come to my books. And he's right. 
And so when we're wrapping up the story, especially, you get a lot of really boring moments with characters that you don't care about, with Vin and Alain, who are just really not good characters. And Sanderson's trying to build these up and try to, and, and at, at the end of the beginning, he kind of assumes that we are, we, we like these characters. He assumes that we've gotten to know these characters to, to such a degree that we are willing to take the rest of the story with them. And I don't think that was a fair assumption because at this point they were not good. I found that Sanderson was leaning so deeply into, they must already care about them. And if they care about, of course, if we cared about the characters, a lot of his future actions would make a lot more sense. But at this point, I don't think it's fair to assume that because he just hasn't developed them enough. And so when we get all these really high stakes environments where we have all these characters that we really don't care about and they're doing really important things that matter to them, it just, to me, it feels like it doesn't matter to the reader. Vin loved the land. Vin loved the land. Shut up, shut up. I can't do this anymore. This is the kind of writing that I literally detest. This is unbelievable. Just, oh, Vin loves the land, Vin loves the land. Shut up, show me, show me. Don't say it every four seconds. Like, we get the idea. Oh, she has an emotional connection to him. Oh, she's so, she's so misunderstood by everyone else. Oh, Elend is the only one who understands her. No, stop. This is so, like, this is so weak writing. This is so pathetic for somebody who's so famous. Just cut that out. We get it, we get it. Oh my God. Because it doesn't matter at all. There's some really odd, specific viewpoints, like, like Ellen's ability to, to, to create democracy. Oh my God, he created democracy. That's brilliant. I can't believe he did that. So at this point, uh, Ellen is basically going around talking about how much democracy means and uh, how, how important it is to be a democratic leader. And I, I find it incredibly odd that uh, this is such a big plot point. I find it nothing more than, guys, trust me guys, Ellen is cool. Ellen is a good guy. Ellen, you should trust Ellen. He, he, he discovered democracy. He invented democracy. He's a good guy. Guys, believe me. He's, a, he's great. You, need to, you, 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 have to, you have to draw fan art of him. Guys, he's, he's noble. He's a nobleman. He discovered democracy and invented it. It's been way too long, way too long writing about how important democracy was. All things considered, kind of, kind of lazy. There's stupid things like that where he creates democracy and we're supposed to be like, oh yeah, this is good writing. This is good writing because Elend, this guy in this medieval environment, is the first person to invent democracy. That makes sense. And also he's willing to die for democracy. He's willing to give up his entire life for democracy because that's definitely how the first people who invented democracy went. They definitely didn't invent democracy and then be like, never mind, let's get rid of the parts that have a problem with me. And so it really does ring flat when you have like another character that is teaching Elend how to be a king and we're supposed to care about them. And they're just so out of the blue and they're really random. And we're supposed to be like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Even though obviously this is such a middle book thing. It's like, oh, let's teach Elend how to be a king. So in the third book, he can be a real king. Oh, can't wait for that. That might be a better thing to do like in the future to have him king, but training him to be king now is so cliched, it's so played out. And it's so obvious what they're gonna do with this. And then it's, it's so obvious that this is like a really lazy point to build up the next book, not to add anything to this book. Because the conflict of Ellen trying to become more kingly is so boring. It's so lame and there's so little conflict, so, so little real conflict. There's like trashy minor conflicts that come out of it, but you can't really call that real conflict. And like, if I just even try to remember the names of these side characters, I know Spook, I know Club, something like that. And then that's that's literally all I know. I, of course I know Seized, um, of course, but most of these characters don't do much. Seized is the only one who has any reasonable importance to the story because he has a lot of lore things that end up meaning, meaning something in the future and meaning something in the plot. And so if anything, I would say Seized is the only character that's reasonably well done here because while Vin and Elend are more obviously important to the story, they they overstay their welcome. They're, they're here too much when they are not as interesting as like they should be in a 60% share of the book. While Seizet is maybe in 10, 20% of the book. And for that amount of screen time, he does pretty well. And so Seizet might be the best character in this book. And then of course we get to the main plot of the book, which I don't even want to talk about because it's just so pathetic. The love story between Vin and Ellen is just so pathetic. It's so awful. And I, I just can't believe that he wrote this and was like, yeah, people are gonna like this. And then people read it and people were like, yeah, this is a good book. I just can't believe that because Vin is such a cliched girl in a romance novel. It's so awful. And like, you know exactly where this is going as soon as it starts. Like, okay, Vin. Vin, who's already a cliched character, Vin doesn't believe she's gonna be loved. He believes she's not worthy, she, but she's also the strongest. She's the strongest, but she doesn't know it. She thinks that she's a weakling. And then she does, and then some guy, rich, rich, powerful businessman, basically, who's also like, like the greatest good person and also really intelligent, is in love with her. And he is like, oh my God, I love you. And then she's like, no, but it's impossible. Like this is the most obvious way to make this happen. Like how many times in this book do I have to read this cliched writing of, 
she didn't understand why he loved her. Like, what? what is this trash? It has been an unbelievable first half of the book. Like, it's staggering how little has happened. It's staggering to think about, like, okay, what actually happened? Okay, Vin did uh, a, a little bit. Uh, Seth did a little bit. Uh, uh, Ellen did a little bit. And then nothing else happened, basically. They've been, like, dealing with one problem. Just discussing how to get it across. And they've just been, like, discussing, like, the most unnecessary thing. It's, it's so heavy-handed. It's just, it's just Sanderson trying to, like... I think it's just him setting up the third book. And it's just him setting up the world and making the world and the characters seem better than they are. And that's that's all that there is in the first half of the book. And so I'm incredibly frustrated. And this is this is the plot of the book, right? This is not like a side plot. People might think that this is like maybe 10 per This is 90% of the book. 90% of the book is the romance. Is, is Sanderson trying to drill down that do you believe them? Do you believe that she does not believe in they're in love, but they are in love? Do you believe that yet? It, it's so awful it, it's just awful writing to repeat this so often to, to make it so cringy to make it so unbelievable to make it like so cliched it, it's, it's staggering that he made this and he thought that this was a good idea frankly this felt like a first draft the amount of pathetic writing that was in this this felt like the first draft this is something that like i would write in high school that is the first draft it, it's it's unbelievably pathetic i just could not get over how lazy the writing was in the romance and I couldn't get over how cliche the story beats were, starting from, oh, they're in love. Oh, why do I love him? Why do I love him? Why does he love me? Oh, I wonder why. This is just like, it's just so dumb. It's like, oh, he doesn't love me. I'm going to leave him because she, because he deserves someone better. Like, what is this? Is he, is he like one year old? Is Sanderson like one, one, is, does he have the mental age of a toddler? Is that what he's writing? Has he never read a romance novel before? Does he think that this is an original story idea? Because everything happens normally. It's like, and then she leaves. And then she finds out that she, she shouldn't have left. And she goes back. And then she stays and she gets married. Duh, no duh, of course. And then like, okay. And then you have like the fantasy element, which is, oh, then he dies, almost dies. And she's like, no, I will not let you die. I'll give up everything for you. I'll, I'll literally give up like everything and also, uh, also, like, Deus Ex Machina, by the way, he's also gonna live for no clear reason, just like no foreshadowing, nothing, just like, he lives. Congratulations. It's staggering. It, it really is. And I, I want to keep raving about this, but I know that I'm just gonna start repeating myself. So, suffice it to say that I, that it has been destroying me. That entire subplot has been destroying me, and that is single-handedly what makes it the entire, um, worst book that I've read this year. It'll end. You look so amazing. You look so old and powerful and regal. What happened to you? Responsibility. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm most certainly a saint within this. I'm, I'm also, not only did I invent democracy, I'm also a, a literal saint. I'm a saint. I'm, I'm out here working so hard that I know I, I look like I look like I'm old now because of all the responsibility I've taken on. What responsibility? Um, uh, just trust me, it's a lot of responsibility to be like doing firewood and stuff. Trust me, it's like it's crazy. This is so embarrassing. This is embarrassing. The heavy handedness with which Sanderson is trying to make us believe that these characters are so much greater and so much more divine and so much more like good people than they are, it's surprising. And really, is is incredibly embarrassing. If I wrote something like this, I would be incredibly embarrassed. Because like this is this is a first draft. This is a first draft. While Elend, yes, he is taking on responsibility. Objectively he is. It is just such a heavy-handed approach to not just kind of imply, imply that, oh, Ellen is becoming like this really dark, uh, deep, like responsibility-driven old man who's becoming crushed by the responsibility. No, it, that's very heavy-handed. What you need to do is you need to imply these things, right? Because nobody's out here gaining responsibility and then people are like, oh, what happened to you? And this person's like, oh, I just became responsible. That's embarrassing. That really is. And maybe the worst book I've read in a couple of years. Like, I have not read a book this bad in a while. Sometimes books are just like kind of annoying or kind of boring or they're just humorously bad. Uh, but this is like humorously bad to with like almost nothing redeeming it. The only thing that's redeeming it, and now I will talk about the only positive in the book, is the ending. Um, I think everybody knows that Sanderson's endings are pretty good. Uh, this is like an undisputed side of, of fantasy. Sanderson has like objectively the best endings of any other storyteller. And so when you have a Sanderson ending at the end of a trash book like this, what you end up with is a ending that raises the level from utter garbage to passable. And in the ending, we have some, some nice action scenes, some unbelievably cringy, cringy, cringy writing. It, it's unbelievable how awful some of this writing is. It's like just Vin like coming in single-handedly taking everybody down. It's like, ah, 
that's just so, that's just such a heavy handed way of making us believe that Vin is a capable and interesting character. It's just such an unnecessary way of just trying to make us convince us that Vin is a real good character. Vin is actually, you, you like Vin guys, trust me, you like Vin when we don't. She's, she's a lame character. She shows up at the end and just kills everybody without that much work. And then she goes and like gets God, godhood and then she gives it up. Like it, it's very stupid, the, the characterization, the cliche-ness. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a story that is not complete trash compared to the story before it that was complete trash. Then there's also the lore, which is um, really good. I, I think that the lore was the only part of the entire book that I, I would consider positive because you got a lot of interesting lore, um, a lot of stuff that is quite original. And it's, it's magic systems, it's history, and just a bunch of stuff within the story that just has a lot of interesting twists. Like I can spoil it, it's it's the fact that the, the savior uh, didn't give up the power. Oh, brilliant. Oh, and then like, oh, he, but he, that was actually the right thing to do because he knew all along that if he does give up the power, he gives it to something greater than himself. Like, that's really, really original. And that's really fascinating. And he, Sanderson really goes ahead and takes normal fantasy stories and then says like, oh, I'll do a parody of it, which of course has been done a couple times, but because it's been done a couple times, he says, oh no, let's do a parody of a parody. And then now you have a double parody and now you have something that's genuinely original. And I respect that a lot. And I think that's the only part of the story that I actually enjoyed. So to generally summarize, I think that the problem with the story is that it's an awful book. And, I, and you know, that, that goes without saying. I mean, maybe it doesn't because a lot of people enjoyed this book for a reason that I cannot comprehend. But Sanderson himself is what makes it so bad. If this was a story written by like Jim Butcher, I'd be like, okay, whatever. It's not a big deal. It's kind of bad, whatever. But Sanderson takes this so seriously. He takes it so seriously that he's like, Guys, this is so cool. This is so cool. Vin is a cool character. This is cool lore. Elend is doing cool stuff. Elend invented democracy. So cool. Trust me, he's cool. It's just so heavy handed. The things that people say and the things that characters do and the way that characters react is so heavy handed that it's so obvious that he is pulling the strings and that this isn't a natural story. It's so obvious that he plotted this out in a way that he wanted the ending to be and he wanted like, he wa okay, we will make Elend uh, be a great king. Okay, how do we do that? And then he plotted backwards and, it, and it's so. It's, it's so unnatural, it's so artificial, it feels so engineered that the things that he, that Elen does are not, are so uninteresting and they're so unrealistic and then he gets to be like a great character because of it. It's just so heavy handed. Sanderson reaches in there with this thick author hands and messes with things and just changes things around so that he makes it so that the end of the story and the, the characters that they become and the values that they have reflect upon him as an original storyteller. And the heavy handedness is the problem. If Vin and Elen had a normal romance, I wouldn't have a problem. It's the heavy handedness with which he tries to convince us that Vin is this original, interesting character who we've never seen before, who doesn't believe that she can be loved, but obviously can love. And Elend loves her for some reason that is not entirely clear, but he loves her for sure. And Elend, and Elend is also this perfect guy and he deserves to be loved also. like. It's just so heavy handed. If this was a normal relationship, like in a million other stories, I would be down for that. I'd be down for that. It would like, it's like a casual relationship. The thing that you see everywhere else is fine, but this takes precedence over everything. And Sanderson's trying to convince us that this is the most important story. And so for that reason alone, it has been a huge struggle for me to read and finish this. And so I think that you know that I'm gonna rate this a one out of five stars. This is an atrocious story and I, don't know how I'm gonna finish book three after reading this. I, I, it was such an unbelievable struggle. It was so hard for, to keep myself from laughing. I couldn't stop laughing after I started reading stuff. It, it was unbelievable. And so I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm gonna read book three, but I hear book three is better. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping the story can at least carry the, the lack of reasonable writing. So take my evidence with a grain of salt, obviously. I'm clearly a minority on this, but I, it, it seems impossible for me to understand how people can enjoy a book like this. It makes no sense. And a lot of reputable people say that this is a great book. I cannot comprehend it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please leave a like and follow me on Goodreads for a written better way of me reviewing this. I reviewed on Goodreads before I reviewed here and I write a lot better than I speak. So you should see that. Subscribe if you like reviews of fantasy. I will be reviewing Mistborn 3 soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.